I want you to open your Bibles tonight to the book of Luke, chapter 8. And I, I, have my, I have two spiritual, main spiritual fathers in my life. One is Dr. Morris Cirillo and traveled all over the world and has preached to more than, or see, led face-to-face -face more than 60 million people to the Lord. But then my other spiritual father is a man you'll never hear of, never know of. His name is Tom Duckworth. He brought me into his home. Taught me how to eat like a preacher. <laughs> he was 330 pounds, and I moved in with him, and with three weeks, I put on 15 pounds. But I tell you, I found out that God had made onion loaves. <laughs> but dear, precious, precious man of God, and one of the most unique uh, revelation gifts I've ever come across he looks at the Word of God, and God speaks to him very, he looks at the Word very poetically, and God speaks to him. I remember he came to my house one time and preached a little Bible study, and he spent the entire time, was it the Word is or and? It was, it was like the Word is. He spent like 45 minutes preaching on is, and we're like frying our socks off off the revelation. And so I, 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 had a, I have a message that I'm going to preach tomorrow that was all ready for tonight, and I felt led to call him up. And so I called him up and asked him to do it, and I said, well, what is God speaking to you? And he said, oh, the Lord has been talking to me about the woman with issues. And he started sharing me a few things, and then I started asking him some questions, and I started getting some revelation. It started popping, and then he told me. Now, he's, 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 he's an older gentleman, and he's, he's not out, you know, do, ministering anymore. He said, now, don't go preach it. He said, well, I, I said, what do you mean don't go preach it? I'm going to preach it tonight. God started talking to me about a woman with issues. Luke chapter 8, verse 43. Now, men, you ain't getting out of it because cause you're included. Because there's men that got issues too. Come on, somebody. <laughs> now, I know I'm making a little play on words, but it, it, you'll see it actually. It fits contextually. All right. Luke chapter 8, verse 43. And a woman having an Issue of blood, 12 years. Now, that's, that's the King James Version. New King James Version says a flow, a flow of blood, which is really correct. We'll talk about that in a moment. But a woman, woman having an issue of blood, 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border or the hem of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stanched or stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng, throng thee and press thee, and sayeth thou who touched me. And Jesus said, Somebody has touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when, I, and when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling, falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him. And how she was healed immediately. And he said to her daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. Someone say, this woman had issues. She had an issue of blood. It literally speaks of a flow coming out of her. Now, it's very interesting because you can look at it very prophetically and very poetically. But the blood, the Bible says life is in the blood. This woman had a condition in her life that caused a continual draining of life. And I want to say there's a lot of people. She's an Israelite. She's a Jew. She's a child of God. And there's a lot of children of God that have issues in their life, <laughs> issues of blood, things in their life that are causing a continual flow of life to go out of them. Hmm? And the Bible says it's very interesting because everything in the Word of God has prophetic significance. She was bound for 12 years. Twelve throughout Scripture is a very powerful and significant number. Twelve is the number of government. 
So what he's saying is that she was under the governmental control of this problem in her life. This problem was so deep, it actually controlled her life. Come on, somebody, amen. And see, here's the, here's the situation. When you got issues, oh, Lord Jesus, when you got issues that get into your blood, you're going to get to a place where you get into bondage, where you're actually being controlled by that issue. You're controlled by that problem. You're controlled by that sin. You might be born again, but you got an issue. Come on, somebody. You got an issue in your life. You got a flow of life that is going on the outside of you. And if you're not careful, that thing will begin to rule and dominate and dictate and control every aspect of your life. Somebody say the devil's a liar. And she had tried to get rid of this thing. And that reminds me of so many Christians because they spend so many time and effort. She went to the physicians. She tried to do everything in the natural to get rid of her spiritual problem. Oh, my Lord. Come on. We got so many people going to psychologists and psychiatrists trying to get rid of. Now, I'm not against that, but they're trying to get rid of a spirit of depression. We got so many people going to the doctors, and I'm not against doctors. Don't get me wrong, but they're trying to go to doctors to get rid of a demon spirit of infirmity. Come on. Come on. Are y'all hearing me? We keep trying to deal with it. I, I can't tell you how many people tell me, well, Brother Steve, I, you know, when I get my life straightened out, then I'll come to church. No, 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 no. You ain't going to get your life straightened out. You got an issue of blood. You got a flow of life going on the outside of you. And there's a demonic government control over your life. And what you need to do is stop trying to go to the natural and get it fixed and go to Jesus. Someone say an issue of blood. Shakara mashande. And they, nothing could heal her. Nothing could deliver her. They might be able to sedate her. They might have even given her temporary comfort, but they weren't able to bring her deliverance. And the Bible says she came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Everybody say the hem of his garment. And so I was wondering, well, what's so significant about the hem? What is so significant about the hem? At first reading, it seems like an old practice. Uh, however, once we understand the significance of the hem of one's garment, these passages will have much more meaning. The word translated hem is actually referring to the fringes or tassels. They were the tassels required to be on the four corners of the outer clothing of Jewish men. These four corners, I got here a... A little, uh, it's, it's actually, it was on any, any outer garment, but over time it became a prayer shawl. And, you know, granted, they were, the tassels were a little different than the tassels on this, but it was the outer hinges, fringes hanging on them. And what they would do is they would have, first off, they would have knots in these tassels that would hang down. And each knot referred to the 613 commands found in the Old Testament. And they were meant to, in fact, let me read you a scripture to understand what this is. In Numbers chapter 15, verses 37 through 41. The Lord said to Moses, speak to the Israelites and say to them, throughout the generations to come, you are to make tassels on the corners of one's garments with a blue cord on each tassel. And you will have these tassels to look at. And so remember all the commands of the Lord that you may obey them and not prostitute yourselves by going after the lusts of your own hearts and eyes. Then you will remember to obey all my commands and will be consecrated to the Lord, to your God. I am the Lord, your God. Deuteronomy twenty-two twelve says this. You shall make tassels on the four corners of clothing with which you cover yourself. And it was meant to be that the Jewish men wore this, and they, it was a public declaration that I am under the submission of the Word of God. And a reminder of all the promises, all the covenants, and all the command of God, so that I would not sin against God. So this woman said, if I could simply touch 
the hem, the tassel of his garment. <laughs> but she was recognizing that there was something more to Jesus. He wasn't just a man. But he in the word. Oh, Rama Sunday. I'm not going to preach for long tonight. This is good, though. Someone say in the word. In the word. But in the word, there was healing. <laughs> They were, he, she was recognizing be, that he was the Messiah. See, Malachi chapter 4, 2 says this. This is powerful. But to you who fear my name, we'll come back to that in a moment, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his, everybody say healing in his wings. That word is the exact same word for the tassels. He says, the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his, oh, healing in his word. He Come on, y'all hear me. Healing, when the son of righteousness rises up, all you're going to have to do is touch the tassel. The wings of Jesus, Sahande. And there will be healing in his wings. Oh, Jesus, Shahande. Ha, and you shall go out and grow fat. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to get happy here. Sakara, my Shahande. Huh? Huh? What does the Bible say? The anointing destroys the yokes of bondage. But what would he see in the Amplified? It says, because of the fatness. That's what the anointing there means. Because of the fatness, the yoke shall no longer fit around your neck. He says, when you get a hold, when you touch me, I'm going to make you so fat that that bondage can no longer get around your neck. Come on. She was sitting there, and an issue of life was flowing out of her. Life was flowing out of her. And she went to everything in the world to try to find something to stop the loss of life. But when she saw the Son of Righteousness, when she saw Jesus, who said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life, when she saw the walking tree of life, she said, if I simply just touch his word... If I touch the hem of his garment, if I touch his word, there's healing in his wings. There's healing. What is healing? Healing, remember, sickness, whether it's natural sickness, physical sickness, spiritual sickness, or financial sickness and disease, it is not a big mountain to overcome. It's a valley. Everything that the devil, every bondage of the devil is the lack of something. She was losing life. That's why she was bound. Y'all yeah. hear me? But he says, if you get to me, I'm going to flow so much life in you. I'm going to make you fat. I'm going to make you, come on, I'm going to make you fat. I'm going to make you fat. You're going to grow fat like a stall fed calves. You're just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger so much so that that bondage can't get around your neck. Someone said the devil's a liar. Say it again. Say the devil's a liar. What was she doing? She came up behind him, which speaks of Humility. She came up behind him and touched the hem of his garment. She came up behind him. She humbled herself and connected to him as the Lord of life. She came up and submitted him herself to his word. Because she realized that I, I've gone to everything in the natural and nothing has helped me. But if I can get to the word... Sunday. Someone say there's power in the word. Power. Say it again. Say there's power in the word. Power. Watch this. Watch this. Psalm 107 verse 19 and 20. 
Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. Psalm 107, verse 19 to 20. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. The Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and all things were created by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made, and the Word became flesh, and we beheld the glory of the one and only begotten of the Father. She recognized that Jesus was the living Word. And if I could just humble myself, if I could just connect to the word of life, if I could just connect to the word of God, there's healing in that word. There's healing in those wings. There's fatness there. Shh. I can't love my Sunday. Somebody say the devil's a liar. Say it again. Say, devil, you're a liar. Talk to the Holy Ghost for a moment. Jesus. So here she comes. She finally presses through. She finally gives up on the world. She finally gives up on man's methods. She finally gives up, and she recognizes, because the Bible says in another trans, in one of the other bi- uh, books of the Bible, when she heard about Jesus, uh, oh, that's why we share testimonies all the time. When she heard about Jesus, she recognized this must be the Son of God. This must be the Son of God. This must be the Son of Righteousness. Oh, my. The Son of Righteousness. This must be the one and that has healing in his wings. And if I could simply just get to him, if I can simply just get to him, if I can simply just get close enough to connect with the hem of his garment, with that connection point with the Word of God, if I simply can get under the... to mission to his authority of his word. And when that happened, Jesus stopped. Walking along, crowded by people, and he went, ah! <laughs> Who touched me? His disciples are saying, What are you talking about, Jesus? What are you talking about, Willis? I'm dating myself on that one. (laughs) Who touched me? They said, what do you mean who touched you? Everybody. No, no, they're brushing up against me, but somebody tapped into me in the spirit. Somebody connected to me as the Lord of life. For I felt virtue. I felt power. I felt dunamis go out of me. I felt life go out of me. She drew on the tree of life. Oh, come on, somebody. I hope you're going to get this tonight, that you can go get to Jesus if you'll just get your eyes off your circumstances and get your eyes off the natural and just look unto him and look unto his word that we can draw on Jesus, the tree of life. Shh. <laughs> Woo. I'm going to get myself drunk. Shh. <laughs> hey! Shokarada shahande. Hey! Come on, that's why you can do it every moment. You don't have to wait for a church service to wind you up. You can be out on the dock in the middle of your job and tap into some virtue. <laughs> hey! 
Somebody say, Lord, make me fat. Say it again. Say, Lord, make me fat. It's not the only time it happened. They understood this. They understood this. Matthew chapter 14, beginning with verse 34. And when they had crossed over, <laughs> whoo, uh, and when they had crossed over, <laughs> some of you just need to start crossing over. Come on, some of you just need to cross over. You need to stop playing on the fence and stop having one foot in the world and one foot in the kingdom of God. You just need to cross over. Huh? Stop playing the church thing on Sunday and the world thing on Monday. It's time to cross over. Hey! And when they crossed over to the land of the uh, Genesaret, the man of that place recognized it. Oh, my Lord Jesus, I can preach happy right here. Shaka, you know what's going to happen when we begin to cross over and we begin to tap in the source of life? The men of this place are going to begin to recognize Jesus. Yeah. Just like they did with my brother. They came up to him. Why? They weren't looking at somebody, some supervisor out of the dock. They weren't looking at somebody out there. They were saying, hey, I see you tapped into the life flow of the Son of God. I'm surprised that truck driver didn't say, sir, I perceive thee to be a prophet. <laughs> Woo! Hey! Come on, do you realize how much damage was done to the kingdom of darkness? The spirit of adultery was broken. The spirit of abuse was broken. Hallelujah! Jesus. We went out to Teen Challenge Thursday night. We went out to Teen Challenge. Oh my! They, and about a third of these guys only been there a couple weeks. Hard guys, hard guys preaching. Did some worship. Did some, was preaching the word, and then all of a sudden God had me share a story, and I started speaking about the Father heart of God. Spirit of God invaded in there. These guys, you were there. Come on. They started weeping. I mean, bawling. We're not talking a little, I mean, we're talking alligator tears, man. They were weeping and crying, snotting and spitting, just wailing as the power of God broke loose. This one man, he's got to be close to 60 years old. He's in there. He came forward. He just walked up. I didn't even give an altar call yet. He came up with a big old towel in his hands, hit that altar, wailing. And he came to me afterwards because he had come out on Tuesday night with the Teen Challenge group, brand new in there. Came out to me and he said, I came to your church and I thought you were a phony. I thought you just wound up in a bunch of hype. And then he started crying. He said, but God touched me tonight. He said, brother, you're real. You're real. You're real. That's why I tell you, don't ever apologize or try to warn people before they come here. They're only ever one touch away from believing. <laughs> come on. They might come in here the big, biggest cynic and critic, but you just you just stand right next to them and say, Lord, let me leak on them a little bit. Karamushi here. Hey, come on. Jesus, Jesus, whoo, shandaribeka, shandarabakara, my Sunday. I got a strategy to get all of you so filled up and so fat in the Holy Ghost that you can't do anything but leak all over the place. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm 
looking forward to the day and it's coming in the name of Jesus that you'll simply just walk into a restaurant and people start shaking in the power of God. Demons start crying out. What are you doing here? I'm here to cast you out. Huh? Come on, you think this is a bunch of wind up? It isn't, brother. My, my brother, my sister, God called us to read deep the wells of revival. And that's not so we have meetings in here, but it's so something breaks loose out there. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible Sunday. Somebody say, I'm crossing over. And when the men of that place recognized him, they sent out into all the surrounding region. <sighs> Do you understand when people, even people outside the church, start recognizing that Jesus is in you and Jesus is moving, then what do they do? They're going to go all over the place and bring the sick and brought to him all who were sick and begged him, watch this, that they might only touch the hem of his. If we can only get connected to your word just a little bit. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus, there's such a revelation of God about to sweep America that all of these people that have been naysayers and mocking the word of God and belittling the word of God, they're going to be such serious sicknesses and diseases. They're going to begin to run back to God and they're going to say, if we could just get connected to the word of God once again. Woo. Hallelujah. And as many as touched it were made perfectly well. <laughs> if I could simply touch his word, if I could simply touch his command, if I can simply come under his authority, I will be healed of this infirmity. There's a lot of Christians with a lot of issues. But it's time we cross over and begin to recognize him. Ooh, hallelujah, hallelujah. So the, the little flow of the anointing just begins to just begins to happen. <laughs> and it becomes rivers of living water. Somebody talking the Holy Ghost just a little bit tonight. <laughs> Come on, we just need to get, get, get more and 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 get more. Yeah, blow that shafar. Blow. <laughs> If I can simply touch his revelation, touch the revelation of his word, if I can simply get under the authority of his word. Shakarama Sunday, Harama Sunday. Come on, you're gonna have to learn how to press through the crowd. You're gonna have to learn not to do what everybody else was doing. See, everybody else was just walking along, Jesus, but she pressed through to touch him. Haramo Shande, that's what God's looking for. Of people that are not gonna let the Lord pass them by. But every time they have an opportunity, they're gonna tap in and get a hold of him till they get so full, so fat. Oh, Ramashande, Kiri and Nerebo Shahande, Kiri and Nerebo Shahande, Sunda Hande, Ha Hande, He He, Shoo, Ha 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 Ha, He Kahande, He He, Shahande, Kahande, Kahande, Bishi Kande, He, Hadne Bushahande, Ha, Shahande, Kakande, Bushahande, 
Kiriandere Bashahande, Kababo Shinda Bashande, Kandere Boshahande. Come on, get your eyes off a of man. Get your eyes on Jesus. <laughs> That's what she did. She finally got her eyes off a of man and she got her eyes on Jesus. Shakara Mashande. You don't need me to lay hands on you. You need Jesus to lay hands on you. Oh, Ramam, ba, 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 Kandara bo shahande re ba shande, karama shuko bo shande, karama shakara mo shikande, ke bo shahande bo shande. There's about three or four people here getting something right now. Ke kahande bo shihande, ka bo shikama shahande, karama shahande, shahande ka bo shikahande. Hey, come on, you're tapping in right there. Ka ba mama, you touch him right now. Come on, he's here. You touch him right now. You touch him right now. You touch him. Right now, you touch his word, you get connected to his command. Oh, Rama Shakarama. If you gotta repent, repent. Shaka Babo Boshonde, Haha, Kika Moshende, Karamoshande, Kandara Boshahande, Kandara Boshe Karama Shahande, Hikande Bebo Shikahande, He, Arthur Moshinde. Come on, just a few more moments, something's happening. Karamoshinde, Fool, Show. Show Karama Sunday, Heka Bo Sunday. Come on, grab a hold of it. Shakarama Mama Masheka Bo Sunday. Shikarama Sunday. Fool, ha ha. Karama Sunday Bo Sunday. Oh God, deliver your people from every hesitation and deliver your people from being simply another one that walks with the crowd and one that presses through the crowd to get a hold of you no matter what it takes, no matter how they look, no matter how anybody else really acts to them. Shakara, but deliver your people from even being aware of the limitations of those around them. Oh. 